Thank you. That concludes the debate on three years on Brexit and workers' rights. It's now time to move on to the next item of business, which is an announcement by the Economy and Fair Work Committee on inquiries into just transition for the Grangemouth area and disabled employment gap. And I call on Claire Baker, convener of the committee, to make the announcement. Um, thank you, President Officer. I welcome this opportunity to highlight two inquiries the Economy and Fair Work Committee is undertaking. So yesterday, members of the committee visited Enable Works and All in Dundee. They are a consortium supporting people with disabilities into meaningful employment and supports employers to identify and provide job opportunities. Thank you also to Dovetail for the tool of their factory. On Monday, members of the committee will visit Glasgow to see the work being done by the National Autistic Society Scotland to support young people into employment. So these visits are part of our ongoing work to look at Scotland's disability employment gap and what needs to be done to ensure the government meets its target to significantly reduce that gap. Our call for reviews is open for another couple of weeks. I also wish to highlight the Economy and Fair Work Committee inquiry into how we can support, incentivise and de-risk the transition to net zero in a way that will benefit businesses and people. The committee has agreed that the first focus of this work will be Grangemouth. We know the transition to net zero is something we must all turn our attention to, and this work will consider the impact and opportunities for the Grangemouth area. If any member would like to find out more about either of these pieces of work, please do not hesitate to contact my clerks. Thank you. Thank you. The next item of business is consideration of business motion 7735 in the name of George Adam on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a business programme and I call on George Adam to move the motion. Thank you, President Officer. I am moved. Thank you, Minister. I call on Stephen Kerr to speak to and move amendment 7735.1. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. My amendment seeks to insert a ministerial statement next week on the disruption in our schools. As the teachers continue their industrial action, causing no end of disruption, the First Minister and the Cabinet Secretary continue to pursue inaction as a strategy. Teachers who do not want to strike have been left with no options. Parents are having to arrange childcare. Pupils aren't in school and are suffering further disruption to their education on top of the disruption caused by two years of the pandemic. And that is why, presiding officer, I'm on my feet yet again, asking for a statement. It feels like every time we get the cabinet secretary to come to the chamber to ask or answer questions, whether it be on educational attainment, the apprenticeship programme, the current strikes, she must be forced into it. And this is not the attitude of a cabinet secretary who is on top of her brief. It's not the attitude of a cabinet secretary who is energized and engaged in her subject area. The attitude of the Scottish Government seems disengaged to the point of laziness. I will give way. Michael Mara. Member for Given Way, Labour is happy to support calls for a statement on these strikes which are debilitating families and schools across the country. Speaking to trade unions this afternoon, they said to me that effectively these, these negotiations have ground to a halt. Is that not a disgrace? Stephen Kerr. It is a disgrace because, presiding officer, many in this chamber, alongside parents and pupils in schools across the country, will have the deepest sympathy for striking teachers. I have sympathy with a profession that seems increasingly to be held in contempt by the Scottish Government. The Scottish Government is negotiating a pay de deal that is now over 300 days overdue. And we see nothing of the First Minister in any of this. She was fast enough to rush in front of cameras, as she has over the last few days, but she shows no animation whatsoever to settle this dispute with Scotland's teachers. Presiding officer, this parliament, I will give way. John Mason. Would the member like to tell the chamber how much she thinks should be offered to the teachers? Is it 10%, 15% or more, and where that money should come from? Stephen John Mason, if we could get the Cabinet Secretary to come to the Chamber to bring us up to date with the negotiations and where things stand, perhaps we can discuss that sort of detail. Because, Presiding Officer, this Parliament needs answers. And I ask for the support today of colleagues to get a ministerial statement at the beginning of next week on this issue. We need to find out what the Cabinet Secretary is doing. Is she negotiating 
with the teachers and the councils. That we know as of the 17th of January, she hadn't attended any of the negotiation sessions. I'll give away one more time. Willie Rennie. D does Stephen Kerr find it surprising that the Cabinet Secretary is so reluctant to update the Chamber? about this once-in-a-lifetime industrial uh, dispute, when they spent the whole afternoon boasting about their industrial relations exercise. Stephen Kerr. <laughs> yes, Willie Rennie is right. There's inherent contradictions in what we hear from the front bench and their attitude towards the teachers' unions and this dispute. Has the First Minister met any of the teaching unions? Now, according to correspondence, presiding officer, which I would share with the, with the Chamber, that I received this week, she's been missing in action despite her personal intervention in the local government pay dispute, in the train driver's dispute, she has yet to set a hand on the teacher's strike. And no wonder members of a branch of one of the teaching unions, the EIS, have written to me saying, the reason we are writing to you, Mr Kerr, is because throughout this dispute, we have yet to see or hear from the First Minister. We obviously want to get this dispute resolved and get back to teaching our young people, but we need the First Minister to enable us to do this. If you see her, could you please let her know that we are looking for her? That's from the EIS. Furthermore, the EIS say it is disingenuous and unacceptable for the Scottish Government and COSLA to continue to misrepresent negotiations as positive and constructive. Are they positive? Are they constructive? Presiding officer, I conclude. We don't know whether they are positive or whether they are constructive. Because all we get from the Cabinet, the Cabinet Secretary are meaningless platitudes in the form of press statements while the strikes continue. Yeah. Presiding officer, the Cabinet Secretary must appear before Parliament. Her laid-back, hands-off approach has failed parents, pupils, communities and teachers. I urge members to support my amendment today so that we can scrutinise the Cabinet Secretary. Um, Mr Kerr, could I ask you please to move your amendment? Oh. Move your amendment. <laughs> more, more. For the opportunity to speak again, I move my amendment. Thank you. I call, I call on George Adam to respond on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau. Thank you, President Officer. You'd be a bit shocked to know that we're actually talking parliamentary business here because uh, Mr Kerr kind of went off on one, I think the term is there, uh, so to speak. But, uh, presiding officer, Mr Kerr may have said he has uh, said this on numerous occasions about asking and requesting a statement for next week, but this is the first time we have actually heard that request for a statement at Bureau because, as Mr Kerr quite rightly knows, there is a process which the Conservatives are very familiar with by which a statement can be requested. Mr Kerr understands this as he was a Tory business manager and he did it regularly in the past. So, however, this was not raised at Bureau uh, at all. And as always, presiding officer, we will consider any statement request raised by business managers through the official route. What we have here, presiding officer, is the Conservative Party indulging in opposition for opposition's sake. It would be helpful Let's if hear the, the minister move away from these political shenanigans and discuss requests for business at Bureau as per the norm. The first question is that Amendment 7735.1 in the name of Stephen Kerr, which seeks to amend Business Motion 7735 in the name of George Adam on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a business programme, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we will move to a vote. Now, there will be a brief pause to allow members to access the digital voting system, but can I ask all those members who have voted previously today to refresh their device? Thank you. <laughs> 